How is Transafactor different from other supplements in the market? Well, when I think about other supplements uh, within the market, I usually think about vitamins and minerals and herbs, and, and Transfer Factor is not like that at all. I think of Transfer Factor as a highly sophisticated colostal extract of bioactive peptides and proteins. Uh, and, and you don't see that in, in most dietary supplements. And the unique aspect of Transfer Factor is, unlike uh, herbs or minerals or vitamins, transfer factor actually educates uh, our bodies, it educates our immune cells to know when to go out and find a target that's going to have some sort of negative health consequence. And that's unlike any other ingredient that's out there on the market. How safe is transfer factor as a supplement for kids and elderly people? Uh, transfer factor is a natural product, right? I mean, it comes from cows, it comes from chickens, and so its very nature is that it's really, really safe as an ingredient into a dietary supplement. However, what For Life has done is we've done a number of uh, studies to demonstrate its safety, and these are called toxicology studies. Uh, and these are studies to support regulatory filings around the, the, the various uh, parts of the world. Uh, and in one of the last studies that we did, a tox study, what we, we, we actually couldn't find a level of transfer factor. So we were giving higher and higher levels of transfer factor. We couldn't find a level of transfer factor that would elicit a toxicological response that would give any sense that transfer factor is not safe. Uh, and so I think from those studies, from the fact that we've been um, selling transfer factor for uh, 20 years now, we've had people uh, taking over millions and millions of capsules of products of Transfer Factor and we've never really had any adver serious adverse types of events and so I think all through the, the, the history of consumption and all the talk studies we go we can say uh, with a high degree of certainty that Transfer Factor is very safe whether it's for a child, for an adult or even for an elderly person. So now that we know uh, that Transfer Factor is really safe for people to consume how can Transfer Factor help us overcome the many health challenges we have today? Well, I think I mean, Transfer Factor uh, really uh, is an immune health uh, ingredient, right? And so we know that the immune system touches so many areas of health in our bodies. And so if we have an optimal immune system, an immune system that's in balance, we know that generally we're going to be pretty healthy. And so I think as we start to take Transfer Factor more and more, and we see the benefits of an optimal immune system, that our overall health will be much better. Transfer factor is so good, but why have we heard so little about it compared to, say, uh, vitamins, minerals, mm -hmm. and herbs? Well, that's an interesting question because I think um, people don't think of transfer factor when they think of colostrum or think of eggs, but we know that colostrum and eggs have wonderful benefits, right? I mean, when you think about colostrum, colostrum is given to calves, to help support their immune system. It's also given to babies, to newborns, uh, to help support their immune system. And for the longest time, people really didn't know what it was in colostrum or eggs that yielded that benefit. And it's only been in the last, um, let's say 30 years, that we've started to realize that these transfer factors that have been discovered a long time ago, you know, almost 70 years ago, were actually contained in colostrum. And so a lot of the research that's been done in the last three years have identified these transfer factors as these small bioactive peptides that confer these immune benefits. And so in some ways, we knew that there was benefits in the sources of transfer factor. We just didn't know that they were transfer factors. And so, so the knowledge of transfer factors has only been in the last few decades compared to things like vitamins, which were, uh, you know, their discovery goes back into the early 1900s. Uh, and so, and then of course, botanicals, they've been around uh, for centuries, right? And if you think about uh, traditional Chinese medicine or Ayurvedic ingredients, those things have been around for centuries, right? And so people recognize those uh, very readily. But transfer factor as it pertains to colostrum or eggs has only been in the last few decades based on some of the research that's been going on. There are lots of studies about transfer factor extracted from blood. But there are also transfer factors extracted from the cow colostrum, which is what we have in the supplement. Are these two transfer factors the same? That's a great question. Uh, and it's one, as we've started to learn more and more about transfer factor and study the mechanism of action, we've actually looked at transfer factor that has been pulled out of 
blood or pulled out of dialyzed leukocyte extracts. This is, these are the same transfer factors that Sherwood Lawrence looked at. And we ran these in the same assays that we were running our transfer factor that's derived out of colostrum. And it turns out that we get the same sort of response in all of our assays. So we have a natural killer cell assay uh, that we measure an immune response. And when we look at Sherwood Lawrence's transfer factor, which are derived out of uh, dialyzed leukocytes, and we look at transfer factor that's derived out of cow colostrum, we see the same response. And so that really tells us that the immune response, whether it's coming from transfer factors out of blood, or the immune response coming out of transfer factors out of uh, colostrum, or even egg, is the same. And so that gives us confidence, that gives us a surety that the same benefits that Sherwood Lawrence saw in terms of transferring immunity from one person to another is the same benefits that we get when we take transfer factor from colostrum or from egg. And transfer factors that is injected into human beings and transfer factors that are consumed orally, the results are the same? They can be. Uh, it's a different delivery uh, mechanism and so the, the prevailing thought in terms of transfer factor that is being uh, orally consumed is that we have uh, in, our, in our gut, we, in our digestive tract, we have these things called parapatches. And parapatches are these ways for transfer factor to get brought from the stomach into the bloodstream. And once they're into the bloodstream, now they're acting as if transfer factors were being injected into our, into our blood. Oh, okay. And so there's different mechanisms for transfer factors to get where they need to be. And there's still a lot of work to be done in that respect because uh, obviously when you're taking peptides and proteins and you're ingesting them, there's a lot of things that are going on, but the prevailing thought is that these are being transmitted into the blood th bloodstream through these peri patches. Where do you see transfer factor will be in the next, say, 10 to 20 years from now? Well, I think there's a lot of room for um, even more discovery. Uh, we have a lot of instrumentation now that we didn't have um, back 10, even 15 years ago. Uh, and what it's really allowing us to do is to look at transfer factor at the molecular level, right? And so when you think about back in the 30s and 40s when Dr. Sherwood Lawrence first discovered transfer factors, no idea what they were. He just knew that they, they transferred immunity from one person to another and they were contained in these dialyzed leukocyte extracts. Um, well, a lot has changed since then, right? We now know what they are. We now know that they are small bioactive peptides and proteins. Uh, and I think the next step in, in that characterization is understanding uh, transfer factors at more of an amino acid level. Uh, and, and I think as we learn more and more about that and we're able to characterize them at that level, we will learn a lot more new benefits. We might actually even come out with new ingredients. We might have advancements in terms of the transfer factor in the next five or 10 years. For the benefit of our viewers, what advice would you give them on how to keep their immune system happy? Well, they have to take transfer factor, right? I mean, that's the obvious yes, one, right? Yes. Uh, and so that's always uh, what I would recommend to people. But I think beyond that, we have to really look at, at fundamentally how our immune system works and how, how, how do we stay healthy, right? And, and so when I think about that, if I take out transfer factor, I think that we have to stay healthy by eating right, right? Having a, a, a healthy diet, right? Eating our fruits and vegetables and making sure we're getting all the vitamins and minerals that lead us to having a, a, an overall healthy state. Aside from that, I think we need to exercise. Um, a lot of people in the United States don't exercise, and so we see issues uh, in terms of obesity, and it's because a lot of times their diets are poor and they're not exercising. And so exercising is a huge component in terms of overall health as well as immune system. We know people who exercise more generally have healthier immune systems, and so exercise is a really key component as well. Uh, and then I would say probably the third component is getting adequate amounts of sleep. Uh, but if you're getting adequate sleep, that really helps your immune system. It helps give, provide you an optimal immune system along with these other components. Um, and that's really hard nowadays because if you think about it, everybody has uh, a cellular phone, right? And the cellular phone's by your bedside. If you can't sleep, you start looking at your cellular phone uh, and then that stimulates your brain and then you you're not able to sleep as well. And so as you decrease the amount of sleep, what happens is that depresses your immune system. And so when you put all these, these things together, you are essentially creating a weakened immune system. And so my advice would be get adequate sleep, 
do adequate exercise and, and, and typically for most people adequate exercise is about 30 minutes a day uh, and then eat right right the, the, the normal recommendation for eating right in terms of fruits and vegetables is to get five servings a day and so if you do those things and then you're supplementing it with transfer factor to support your immune system to boost your immune system then I think you'll have a very very healthy immune system